Hey guys, Anthony here. It is Sunday, August 23rd. And today I'm focusing on going through my bug out bags and my get home bag. The bag you see in front of me is an Osprey Kestrel 48. I've got a lot of videos on my channel on this bag. Uh, this is my primary bug out bag. It's been packed for a while. So what I'm going to do today is unpack it and go through the contents, repack it, and get it set up. So if you haven't been through your bag in a while, it's a good thing to do. Make sure things are up to date, changed out. If you need batteries, food changed out, etc., water. One of the water bladders, and I use all Camelback water bladders in my bags. This one here I have a video on, and these are the new ones that you could fill up with water and they will not uh, leak. So you don't have to have the drink valve hooked to it. So this will go in that bag. I just filled it up with tap water, changed it out. And uh, so I'll show you when I unpack this bag, uh, some, of what, some of the contents that were in it, some of what I'm putting back, not putting back. And I plan on using this shelter system this um, Life Fighter Scout 1 tent that I posted a preview video on a few days ago. So that's going to be part of that bag. And then right here with the pack cover on it is my Camelback mother load. Uh, this bag I primarily carry uh, in my vehicle when I'm traveling uh, around uh, home base. And this is more of a get home bag, but it's got a lot of redundancy that the bug out bag has. It's just smaller and it also has a shelter system on it. It's got a, um, a snug pack uh, ionosphere one man shelter in that bag and also a camelback water bladder that's filled and ready to go. So you have water immediately on your trek home or away from home. So that's what we're going to do today. We'll unpack this bag here, this Osprey, and um, get going on repacking it and getting it set up again. Okay, my top two pockets on the top of the pack housed these items. So what I'm going to change out of these items, I'm going to change the tea and coffee. I'm going to update them to fresher ones. And then right there, uh, there's some food bars that are going to get changed out. I'm sure they're expired. But the rest of the stuff, like the, the stove there, the folding stove, the toilet paper, the platypus bladder, a pair of eyeglasses, some electrical tape, and the um, bug spray and the cert book here to write in will stay in those top pockets. Okay, the top inside pocket in the lid contained an X-bed blow up pillow, a snap light, a clothesline, hanging clothesline, and a small hygiene kit that I'll go through and make sure I have what I need in there and that nothing is uh, that needs changed out. And that was in this pocket here, the zippered pocket under the lid. So now we'll be getting into the actual body of the pack. I'll empty that out and we'll lay the items out. All right guys, in the main body of the pack, I had the following items, a pair of gloves, a ground cover, a 48 gallon drum liner or garbage bag, toilet paper, water filtration, paracord, a high visibility bandana, a static V, a blow up air mattress, a cook set, which I'll open up later and show you. That's titanium cook set. A towel with a bandana. Two different food bags that I have to go through and look for expiration dates right there. They're in packed. Uh, there's some mixture of MREs and um, freeze-dried food and some other regular foods that you buy in the store. Uh, those are there. Those, those will have to go through. And then a bag, a dry bag with clothing in it. So those are the items in the main body of the pack. What I have to add to this pack again, as I said before, is my shelter system and my sleeping bag system.
All right, guys, these food items you see here, the brown rice, the lentils, the Lipton soups, the uh, pink salmon, and the Noor's pasta sides, those will all get thrown out. They're pretty much expired. Um, the Mountain House granola, milk, and blueberries here says best use, but has a best use by date that's expired, but I'm going to test one out and uh, see if I like it, see if, or see if it's still good. And this cheese tortellini MRE is still good. I may keep that in. I may change it out. This backpacker's pantry is good through uh, the uh, 2021. I'll keep that in there. That's still good. But some of this other stuff I'll toss. And then that bag there has bullion, salt, and stuff like that, and some spices. That's good. And so my food bags are now ready for repacking and restocking so i'll do that this weekend get the, some updated food in there get that back in the pack and um let's take a look now at the um my stove kit since that's really important how you're gonna boil up water uh in the field all right guys real quick the stove system that i have here this system all nestled into the snow peak titanium set which i have videos on in my on my channel the snow peak has a larger cup, a smaller cup, a lid. Uh, inside the whole setup, I have the Soto micro regulator uh, stove, which is a super lightweight uh, gas powered stove, isobutane. There's the stuff sack everything was in. I had this bandana in there with the um, stove wrapped in it, everything wrapped in it inside the cup, a small fire steel cigarette lighter and a second pair of hotlets that go on the cup here so you don't burn your mouth when you're drinking. And then this is just a little grabber to grab a hot pot off the uh, stove. So that's the stove set for this uh, bug out bag. Guys, as I stated earlier, the Light Fighter Scout 1 tent will be my shelter system. I'm gonna also get the, the floor for this that you could use with just the tar with just the rain cover instead of setting up the tent it's called a hasty hooch so i'm going to order that this week uh, then my sleeping bag right now since it's still warm out it's still august will be the snug pack fully insulated jung jungle blanket that's right there and then my wife made this for me in her sewing room with some water resistant military material uh, it's probably about six foot by six foot and I'm going to use it as a ground cover, you know, to lay down, sit on, put the pack on, etc. And just an honorable mention here, um, I packed a couple of cans of these wild sardines in olive oil. Very high in protein and fat. Great to fill you up if you're on the run. You just snap open the can and you've got, uh, you know, I think it's 30 milligrams of protein. I'll look at this here. We've got uh, 200 calories, 340 sodium, 22 grams of protein, um, and 12 grams of fat, which is what you want. Lots of calcium, omega-3s. These are good to have in your pack, at least one or two of these, I suggest. I don't know if I mentioned earlier when I showed you my folding Esbit stove as part of the... Um, item that was in on one of the top flaps it's quick to get to i have four esbit tablets inside that stove that i could light put my uh, pot of water on and boil water and also adding honorable mention here to these trioxine military heating tablets these are great i've got a bunch of these and so here's a pack of three I'm probably going to put uh, these three in that bag as well, where I could access them quickly. You don't have to worry. They light up very easily. They, um, they don't give off a big signature or flame like you're starting a fire. And along with the um, Esbit tablets, you know, I've got, uh, you know, f between four and eight fires or heating times I could heat up water uh, for food or drink. Okay? trioxane tablets all right guys looking at the bottom of the pack i've got the uh 
bottom zipper opened and you notice a little shelf here. So this is the interior of the pack. This is the bottom. There's my clothing bag that's at the bottom. I'm going to put the sleeping bag system, which in this case is going to be the snug pack jungle blanket zipped into here. And then my, my actual shelter system will be on the outside of this pack here. And I'll show you how I set that up once I get done. Then what we'll do is I'll review all the items and bags on the outside of the pack and uh, give you an, a great overview. And then bottom here on this pack, this, these Kestrel packs, this little compartment here, I've got, a, got another garbage bag and then the pack comes with its own pack cover, which is here. So you can pull that out if it's raining and cover your pack. So that's built into the Kestrel pack, the Kestrel uh, Osprey Kestrel 48. So a great feature of this pack. So let's get the jungle blanket in there and the shelter system on, and then we'll look at the outside of the pack. All right, guys, on either side of this pack, there's two side pockets that zip out. I've got this one unzipped right here, and they reach into the side of the pack here. So you can reach in and grab what you need. In the side pocket on the one side, I have this cordage. I have another water filter system. And then on the other side, I'm not going to open it, but I have a, another pair of gloves to grab really quick. And um, so that's the uh, side pockets. Again, I've got the jungle blanket zipped in on the bottom here. And then my shelter system will go down here. There's also a pack out, um, like a mesh pocket here that you could put like dirty clothes or something wet and just stuff something in there. I I'm leaving that empty right now. Uh, carabiner right here, uh, your tie downs, your pull downs. Um, this carabiner up here has got a little pouch with a full size fire steel. Again, being able to make fire, you need redundancy fire steel, lighters, matches. Uh, you want to be able to light your, your um, trioxine and your Esbit tablets. A lot of times you need a flame for that, so <clears throat> your lighter and some matches would be good. And um, also, I may add to this some fire paste, which lights up super easily with a spark. And uh, outside here, a Maxpedition dump pouch. I think this is a large size dump pouch to open up and collect items that you need. I've got a Mora knife here and a dangler uh, just on the outside of the pack to grab. And then I'll show you what's in the uh, green pouch and the black pouch is medical on this side along with um, some items here I'll empty out. I've got some utensils, a folding saw, etc. pot holder in there. And then on this one side of the pouch here, we've got a stainless steel bottle filled with water and a stainless steel cup. All right, guys, just to show you the um, bottle that was on the side of the pack, you have an Ascend stainless steel cup with the fold-out wings here, and you have a clean canteen stainless steel water bottle with a little hanger here. So this is filled with water, so another 32 ounces of water here plus the 100 ounces that's in the Camelback. So I'm a little heavy on water with this bag, but without water, you're not going to be successful in anything that you do and then to get more water in an urban type environment or suburban uh, a good idea is to carry one of these silcock keys so you could access water on a building a school a store etc a lot of times even if the water is down the pressure in the building will deliver some water you could fill up your camelback your canteens before you got to start using your life straws or whatever else you have for uh, filtration okay? okay I have the pack hanging here just want to show you the uh, back side here you have an airscape like mesh padded area built into this Kestrel pack and again if you watch my videos on this pack in Florida it's great for keeping heat off your back um, the camelback bladder is in the outside pull out area here my drink tube is just up over my left shoulder here. So right there I could access water while I'm running or walking or hiking. Uh, 
both your hip belt here have two pockets, one here and one on the other side of the hip belt, um, which I'm going to show you what I have in there now. And then on the other shoulder, I have a whistle, tethered signal whistle, just another keeper there, a little carabiner to hang something if I needed to. Um, here I have a pair of safety glasses, clear safety glasses, but again, you could put whatever you want in there uh, to protect my eyes if I'm running through brush or uh, whatever. And then we'll take a look at what's in this Maxpedition pouch right here. There's several items in there that are worth uh, mentioning. And the first aid kit, I'm going to redo and do another video on it, but your first, my first aid kit is right here on the other side, outside the pack. Again, just another keeper here um, on the outside. And I have a big little carabiner here that I keep with the pack. So I could do what I'm doing now. I could hang it or clip it and keep it out of the way or keep it from falling over. Items in the left pocket on the belt are a little, aside from the first aid kit, I like to keep a small boo-boo kit out that I build myself. It's got some medicine, some gloves, some band-aids, some pain aid medicine. I'll go through that and update it. But a lot of times you just need a band-aid or a piece of gauze or whatever, or a Motrin. You've got it without going through your first aid kit. Can never have enough bandanas. I'll change out that cliff bar. That's something you have in there. Something quick you could eat on the run without going in your pack. It's good to have a bar or two high calorie bar, high fat bars there. More uh, toilet paper. I've got toilet paper redundancy in this pack. Uh, a compass, a Brunton compass with a mirror that folds down. That's in the pocket. Some camo stuff to color your face in. Uh, the other pocket, I've got a black diamond headlamp, which I got to double check the batteries on this. This also is rechargeable, USB rechargeable. Uh, I've got a Leatherman Wave. You need something of a tool kit. This is a great Leatherman or something compatible to it. The Leatherman Wave is excellent. I've got a bandana, excuse me, a mosquito head net to put over my head. And I've got a ExoTac, again, covering my Bic lighter, my full-size Bic lighter, so it can't get damaged. This is will waterproof it and also floats. I could also tether it, keep it outside the pack or on me. Uh, so that's in the pocket as well to get a quick flame to start a fire. All right, for the headlamp in this bag, just a basic Petzl with three modes, nothing fancy. It takes AAA batteries. And then a battery holder with six AAA batteries protected and not inside the headlamp for because any length of time inside the headlamp when you don't use it, especially in the hot weather, your batteries may leak. And these have a shelf life of, I think, 10 years. So six batteries. The light only takes uh, two. And there you go. So extra batteries and your headlamp. Okay, sorry about that. This Petzl Takina, there's the name. This Petzl Takina headlamp takes three batteries. So I have a set for it and a change out set. So it'll last me a long time. All right, this uh, side Maxpedition pouch that you see here, this is a multi pocketed pouch. So if I open it up on the zippered side, you notice there's all kinds of compartments in here. I've got a Sharpie and a regular pen right there. And then on the floor here, I have a bandana, rubber gloves, an emergency fishing kit right there. Some waterproof, stormproof matches right there with a striker, more toilet paper, a cert notebook with waterproof pages. Okay, there's waterproof pages there to write on. A fire kit, just a, um, a tin that I have with a ranger band on it and we'll open it up and we'll see what is in this kit 
to make a uh, fire. Let's open that up. There you go. There's a, a wet fire. These are from um, Dave Canterbury site. These are uh, discs, fire discs. Those are soaked in material. Also, these here are soaked in material. You could scruff them up a little bit with a knife, get the fiber showing, hit it with a fire steel, and it'll light even when wet. So I've got a bunch of them in there. And I'm also gonna add those trioxine fuel bars uh, to this pack, this side pack as well. And we've got another pocket in the front that I'll show you in a second. In this uh, front pocket, this, this buckles down. It's got a front zipper here in this small zippered area. I have one of these pocket monkeys. It's like a multi, those multi-tool can opener, seatbelt cutter, little ruler there, etc. Different size um, nut openers. So that's in that front pocket. Another bandana inside this peel away area here. So these items that I'm showing you now go in here. Again, there's my water key bandana. I put the uh, trioxine in the other pocket, three of those. And I've got some sterile eye patches that I keep in there as well. So that's the uh, side pouch of the Maxpedition pouch that's on the side of the bag. Okay, guys. Um, so I replaced the food bars with some of these cliff bars. Uh, try to get a non-chocolate. Chocolate usually melts in the summer. And then in the winter, it'll it'll freeze and get um, you know crumbly and makes a mess when you open it, even in the winter. So I stick with like Cliff Bars or something like that. Even if they do get soft, they still stay. It's mostly oatmeal, so it still stays good. And then I got a couple of these Bison Bars uh, for the front hip pockets, and also for the uh, I'll put this in the top pocket with this bar. So on the run or on the go, you've got uh, some complex carbohydrates, some proteins. This has a little sugar in it also. And you don't have to get into your food reserves when you're on the go, and this will still give you a little bit of energy. So good things to get and add to your bag. Uh, another thing that's not in the bag, but it's gonna be with me, is my Snug Pack full-size poncho. And in inclement weather, this will go over my entire body with the pack on. So these uh, snug pack ponchos are excellent additions to your bug out kit. I could attach it with a carabiner and have it on the outside, just grab it, put the pack on, throw it over and I'm covered. And then also uh, didn't mention it, but um, something like this uh, cold steel SRK, uh, this one's outfitted with a tech lock I put on so I could put this pack on or put the pack itself on and I can um, clip the front straps, the chest strap together uh, and then run the tech lock right through it and have my knife right in front of me, upside down, right side up, whatever. Uh, so I could have quick access to a large type uh, fighting knife. So this bag is more, more or less packed out. Um, I added a small uh, cup to it here, right through the carabiner. I added a good one of these um, caps that you can get wet and just wring it out. It's an Under Armour cap. And so there's my shelter system attached to the front via these uh, clips there and there. And I just ran that through the, through the shelters system there so it stays good going left to right so it won't it won't get cockeyed when I'm walking. I added some tincture of iodine to the eyeglass pouch with another pack of matches so tincture of iodine you could add that to water and um, I think three to six drops per quart and that'll disinfect water for you. I put my wife's uh, six by six tarp that she made me. I put that right in the um, so I got quick access to it there on the back of the pack. 
So basically, guys, there is the uh, pack regrouped, ready to go. 95% uh, of what I want is in it. I'll go through again when I watch this video and um, look at it. But you'd be pretty well equipped with something like this in your vehicle as a bug out bag. Now remember, a lot of people envision themselves putting on their bag and just hiking for 30, 40 miles. Odds are that's not gonna happen. Odds are you're gonna throw this in your vehicle or have it with you in your vehicle. Something happens, you're gonna get from point A to point B, you know, take the bag out, put it into, uh, go to another place or shelter area and then have your bag with you. Um, you know, hiking miles in the woods with it is probably not going to happen, although it might. Having it with you in a bug out situation where you could just grab it or have it in your vehicle and just take off. Uh, the only other thing, you know, that would be with me that's not discussed here and it's not inside the bag is firearm, ammo, etc. That would normally be with me, accompanying me, that I would add in addition to this uh, bag. So there you have it, guys, the uh, Kestrel or the Osprey Kestrel 48 bug out bag set up and ready to go. Questions, comments, things you guys would add. Again, you could take along some maps of the area. There's, there's always something more you could add. I've got a pair of Ranger beads on my other pack, which is right there. Uh, so I may get another pair of ranger beads for this. That, that'll help you keep pace or keep track of how far you've, you have walked. Um, again, more than likely, you have your smartphone with you. Um, and so there you have it. The only other thing, again, is a good ham radio, two-way radio. Again, I have those inside. Those are usually with me in my vehicle. So something like this Belfang that you could take with you or just a two-way radio I have those inside that way you can keep in touch when you get to your destination having one or two small two-way radios is a good idea so these are things you could add to it this is the basic pack out uh, there's always something else you could add and you're gonna see that in the comments below you know look at the comments and then tailor your bag this is giving you a good idea of some of the things you should have um, out in the field okay so again thanks for joining me guys take care stay ready but put some thought into your bag uh, based on where you live what part of the country uh, the season and you always have to go through and update it for the season I would go through this for before winter and maybe add a warmer sleeping bag uh, to this but that life fighter scout one shelter is definitely bomb proof it's a military type shelter uh, that'll do me good in almost any type of climate or environment. So there you go, guys. Anthony signing off. Take care and stay ready.